Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. Industrial design has always been very central to our mission at Starfish, right from the very beginning. I think our very first employee was actually an industrial designer. And over time, we built out a really strong uh, industrial design team with diverse talents and built out a human factors team. But there are some formalities of that process that uh, relating to formative and summative studies that are not only regulatory requirements, but they're also very important to get the thing right. So in this video, I'm sure you'll really enjoy some insights on design strategy and also some human factor strategy. Thanks for watching. I'm sure you really enjoy the video. My name is Paul Charlawa and I'm the industrial design human factors and uh, user experience manager here at Starfish Medical. At Starfish Medical, we take a unified approach to industrial design, human factors and UX. This is a really important aspect because very often, devices will have a need for all three of these different facets. And we like to ensure that they're not considered from a siloed approach, but from a, but from a unified team at the same time, this team providing distinct expertise for each one of the needs of the project. Hello, my name is Kevin Merrick. I am an industrial designer here at Starfish Medical. And today I'm gonna to talk about algorithm-aided design and I'm going to explain to you what is an algorithm. Uh, so an algorithm takes an input and then you have a number of processing steps uh, and then it gives you an output. So you can make an analogy with, uh, for example, baking a cake where the cake will be your output, uh, the recipe will be the algorithmic steps and the input will be the ingredients. My favorite part about algorithm aided design is that you can write down your own uh, algorithm to design and solve the problem that you're facing. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of a different market. It's a jewelry designer uh, that created his own library. And so he has uh, all his input on one side. So he went down and looked for all the sizes in different markets, so the US market, the European market, e store, and created a library of all the different materials and their weight and their quantity and their price on the, the market. And by putting all these input together, he's able to uh, have a real time cost on his different parts. And uh, he can tailor his design to meet his cost target all at once in just that one software because he created his own, li his own uh, library of uh, algorithm. And I think this is really powerful and I can see so many applications in the medical industry. Uh, so my name is Hannah Rusat Guillory. I'm a human factors engineer at Starfish Medical. Uh, recently, the Human Factors Engineering team was involved with the formative and summative validation of a smart orthopedic implant. The home formative was conducted in Victoria at a nearby hotel. Um, we recruited lay users who were reflective of the intended patient population. So within this formative, we simulated the patient receiving the product and setting it up in their home. So we evaluated the shipping packaging that they received as well as the user documentation that they were provided. Uh, there was also an application on the computer that was part of this evaluation as well. So for the operating room formative test, we conducted it in the States uh, at a location that was used typically to train clinicians with the use of new operating room tools. Uh, we prepared all the materials and planned ahead of time before traveling down there. And then we set up the facility to accurately mimic a realistic operating room environment. Uh, so the intent of the formatives was again to put us in a good spot for the summative to make sure that all of our materials were properly prepared and we were at the level of fidelity that we wanted to be for that validation. And it was also to provide key recommendations that we could make to the client for specific pieces of the user interface. Um, we had great findings as it related to the user documentation, as well as the graphical user interface for the home environment and for the packaging, the user documentation and the app that the clinical users used as well. So the formative usability studies, as well as the final summative validation were key components of the successful application for the FDA de novo of this product. On a recent project, uh, that uh, it was a device that required industrial design, so there was a hardware embodiment to it, alongside with a graphical user interface. And the graphical user interface, um, so a, a digital interface, had two components to it. 
There was a user component right at the device itself, as well as a web component. In addition to that, there was a significant human factors component because we had to deal with both the patient interface, so how a patient interacts with the system, as well as how users themselves interact with the system. And so all of these different pieces together make for a very complex sort of ecosystem of uh, design requirements that really require the team to work closely together. We have human factors experts that were involved in both the usability of the screen as well as the usability of the hardware system and they were and the, the the human factors expert of the hardware system worked in conjunction with the industrial designer who was doing the overall embodiment uh, development of the system so that included touch points aesthetics all of that kind of thing fit and finish alongside the human factors expert which really dealt exclusively with what was that user experience what is that safety and efficacy that we need to consider and how are we making sure that that's being uh, drawn not just from our own hu internal heuristics and good design practices but from live user feedback through uh, usability testing uh, on the formative side uh, as well as formative evaluations. Hello, I'm Mike Loveless and I'm an industrial designer with Starfish Medical. Many times the environment itself will influence how someone interacts with the device. We can take a uh, ventilator as an example. Many times these are used in an ICU setting. These are very high anxiety, uh, high speed, extremely busy uh, environments, could be extremely bright lighting, quite noisy. Um, in, in, in understanding this environment, that can help uh, influence how we want to design this device. Uh, alarms need to be heard above maybe this noise, but maybe we want to keep it a little bit back to reduce that anxiety. Um, so we want to go into these environments, observe them and see what are the workflows and how our device is used within this environment. The users in the end are the people that know these devices and know how they will be used much better than we ever will. Um, so it makes sense to bring them in and have them be part of our design team. What we can do during these sessions, we can create stimulus. So create reality from some of these intangible findings, but create maybe their small models, maybe their uh, little sample interfaces. Uh, but we bring those users in, we give them the tools, and we have them create the device for us. Um, in these sessions, it's important to remember that while we are experts, we want to be much more facilitators during this process. We want to allow the user to create the best possible experience uh, for this device in the end. If you'd like to know more about Starfish, we've been doing this for 20 years. We've developed hundreds of devices for companies all over the industry, and we've helped many founders become very successful and have big clinical impacts. That's what we really love for. So enjoy the content. If you'd like to talk to us about your project, we'd be happy to talk. Thank you.